y'all, I'm back into my FNAF phase. Oh my god, when it was first announced that Warner Bros. would be producing a FNAF movie, 14 year old me ascended. Just to go a little bit into it, when it was first in the making, Gil Keenan, who was involved in the Poltergeist remake, was set as a director. Also, random side note, so many leaks happened around this time, getting people's hopes up. For example, around seven years ago, this image was leaked and people went with the idea that they were the animatronics to be used for the movie. But as it turns out, the director at the time, Gil Keenan, confirmed that they were not. Rather, they were inspiration pieces for the actual characters. Then I kept getting trolled by all of these fan-made FNAF trailers. Anyways, suddenly over time, Warner Bros kind of ghosted everyone. No more updates, no release estimate, and this was where eventually Blumhouse took on the project. Now, the FNAF movie had a long, complicated development. According to MovieWeb, it's a project that has gone through different writers and directors before getting to a point where game creator Scott Cawthon was happy enough with the script to sign off on the adaptation. The movie has officially started filming under the working title Bad Cupcake, as producer Jason Blum has revealed with the first image shared from the set, as you can see below. Honestly, I have an insane amount of respect for people who fight to keep their creative freedom from being changed, but unfortunately, this only extends the release of the movie. Just know, I promise you the wait time is totally gonna be worth it. And gonna be going into detail about predictions, but before that, uh, let's get into a brief explanation of what's going on right now in the production of the film. As of right now, there's no release date yet. But filming is set to last from February 1st to April 6th. So quite honestly, it could be another year before we see the movie released. Some are pushing for the release to be sometime in late 2023. It's a push, but more likely than not, I can see it be released mid-2024. In terms of a teaser or trailer, most people are thinking sometime mid-2023. The movie is being directed by Emma Tammy, and we're not exactly sure what direction she's taking with the movie, but we know that Scott Cawthon confirmed that the movie will revolve around FNAF 1, which I'm actually pretty happy about considering how big the lore is. Starting on FNAF 1 is a fantastic idea. If several games were meshed into one movie, I think it'd muddle the story, it'd feel a tad convoluted and confusing for new audiences. Honestly, it could be challenging to balance out and cater to new audiences along with original fans, and we know how original fans are with the lore. As far as we know, the cast is Matthew Lillard as William Afton, Josh Hutcherson as Mike Schmidt, Hyper Rubio as Abby Schmidt, Mary Stuart Masterson as an unnamed villain, and a few other people that are not confirmed. In fact, Google showed these three people, and after a little bit of research, it's more likely than not people who are not in the movie. In fact, one person said that people adding fake casting info a while ago that simply has yet to be filtered out. So eventually we'll find out who the rest of the cast is. So let's talk about the image itself. Now this video is going to feature what I think is going on in the movie. Now the FNAF universe in this lore extremely varies. So let me know what your opinions are and correct me if I miss something or something's inaccurate, which I wouldn't be surprised if I do. A lot of my theories have plot holes in it, so y'all be nice. <laughs> Coffee break. So the scene is set in what looks like a normal diner. The clapperboard shows the title of the movie, Bad Cupcake, which I love. I'm so excited to see Mr. Cupcake. It's also covering the actor's face. Now this scene can either be the beginning of the FNAF story in complete chronological order, or maybe a flashback to that initial discussion of creating the first restaurant. So I believe this shot is Henry and William discussing their blueprint on the animatronics and the overall concept of the restaurant. Now, let me rant a little bit here. I love flashbacks. According to Cheshire Novel Prize, flashbacks break up the chronological flow of a story, making it more interesting and realistic. Flashbacks make readers more connected to the characters. Effective flashbacks provide a deeper insight into who a person is. This could really be an opportunity to make the story more dramatic, more dramatic than it already is, right? It would really emphasize Henry and William as the villains. It showed the first conversation about the restaurant, where it all started, how it became a butterfly effect that impacted the lives of those involved with the restaurant, how many met their traumatic death at the hand of these animatronics. Also, down the line, if Blumhouse decides to make a sequel movie that goes further into the lore, to a point where Henry and William's fallout, where William, filled with rage, kills Henry's daughter, this flashback allows the audience to really see the contrast, the juxt... juxt... 
juxtaposition of the relationship and the inevitable fate of going from friends to enemies. And I love this idea, I love this possible route that Blumhouse could take. It, it, it's a way to show really good storytelling. So a document was leaked by Geek Vibes Nation, which showed some of the lead characters, Mike, Abby, and Vanessa, and I'll be summing up what it says. Mike is in his mid-twenties to late thirties. He works at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria in order to provide for himself and his sister. He's riddled with guilt over a tragedy in his past and has an obsession with finding out the truth. His ten-year-old sister, Abby, is described as inquisitive, brave, creative, and keen. She's an introvert who expresses herself through her drawing. She usually fends for herself since she was raised by her unreliable brother. Finally, we have police officer Vanessa, who shows up during one of Mike's work shifts and helps him survive the night. She seems to know a lot about the restaurant's past, yet she doesn't reveal too much about it. Overall, I'm loving the inclusion of the night guard's backstory, more so him being the lead character. Now, there's a lot of theories, but this document feels like it makes some very obvious references. First of all, Mike, as we know, is short for Michael, so could he be willing William Afton's son, Michael Afton. Also, Abby is sometimes but rarely short for Elizabeth, and some have even mentioned that Abby is an anagram for baby. So could this be William Afton's daughter who meets her tragic death to Circus Baby in Sister Location? Mike's description also explained that he is riddled with guilt over tragedy in the past. Could this be referencing the bite of 83 at Fred Bear's Diner, where Michael leads his younger brother Evan to his death, leading to the closure of the first restaurant? Restaurant. While all of this seems almost obvious, it leads us to a few questions and like inconsistencies. Why is Michael left to provide for himself and Elizabeth? Assuming they're related to William, would that mean William kicked Michael out after the Bible Baby 3? That could make sense, but why is Elizabeth with him? What did she have to do with Michael's mistake? Also, why would Michael be working at Fazbear's? Maybe his dad showed him some mercy by letting him get a job there as a security guard at the new restaurant, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Maybe William knew about the animatronics being quirky at night, so he exposed Michael to possibly receiving the same fate as Evan. And we can't ignore that Abby and Mike's last name in the movie are Schmidt. It's a stretch, but one theory is that somehow, if Michael is related to William, maybe Mike would want to change his last name to separate himself from the incident of 83 and from his dad. Mike is said to be in his late 20s or 30s, so a lot of time would have passed between the bite of 83 and the present setting of the movie. Which side note means that the movie is set in the 1990s and we know this is confirmed because it's reported that Blumhouse has been gathering cars from the 90s. Anyways this is all speculation but knowing Scott Cawthon nothing is created by accident so we'll find out what all of this means eventually and there will possibly be more leaks in the future. I also want to bring up Vanny like ah, she's like look at her she's chilling in the pig. So Vanessa played by Elizabeth Lale will be appearing as a police guard warning Michael about the quirky animatronics. The animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky. Now this, this is definitely a creative liberty by Blumhouse, since in the games, she only appears in the VR game Help Wanted, Special Delivery, and Security Breach as a security guard. In the games, Vanessa is influenced and essentially traumatized by William Afton's Lich Trap version, which leads her down a path to become her alter ego Vanny. So why is she in the movie if she doesn't originally appear in FNAF 1? What could be the events that led her to Mike? At what point did she get involved with the restaurants and why is she inclined to help anyone involved. So here's my overall thinking. There's a lot of holes in it, but hear me out. But William and Henry open up Fazbear's Entertainment. The bite of 83 happens. Mike and Abby are somehow related to William and are evidently kicked out after the events of the bite of 83. Mike pleads with William to let him get a job at Fazbear's to support himself and Abby. Mike becomes a security guard and somehow meets Vanessa, who was a former security guard at Fazbear's. She then regularly warns him about the animatronics and helps him survive all five nights. I also want to assume that one of the actors in the movie is Phone Guy and he somehow plays an important role in the movie, but I don't know, that's, that's a whole nother theory that I like haven't even thought of. Anyways, I think a lot of these new characters, these new villains, and new leads are being set up for future movies, which I hope there will be. I think that will be determined by how much this movie makes at box office. Also, I wish I knew what their budget is. It's not written or reported anywhere. I guess in conclusion, considering how the movie will be taking creative liberties, I figured, you know, I would take some creative liberties with my theory. How credible is my theory? 
Uh, I wouldn't even fully believe my theory, I gotta be honest. Like, I don't know how MatPat did it with his whole entire FNAF series. I love his videos, but oh my god, would it be hard making them. Especially with a lot of audiences sharing their, their very strong opinions towards his videos. But anyways, with Blumhouse making this movie, expectations are high. I know mine are. I mean, it makes sense. They have a love, they have a passion for making horror movies like Get Out, Split, The Purge series, and... Megan, which I haven't watched, but I actually heard really good things about it. Anyways, I'm excited to see how faithful they stay to the games. This video was kind of all over the place. I'm not too familiar with making theory videos. As I was writing my script, I was like, I don't know how to organize this, but whatever, I'm just gonna throw everything out there and hope it's cohesive. But thank you for watching. Please drop more video ideas. I love covering internet related things, TV shows, movies. I look forward to reading all your comments. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.